and welcome to this Christmas gift guide. A slice of festive fun, although the production budget on this particular video could have been higher. It's been, what with one thing and another, a tough year for everyone out there, again. So I thought a little bit of retail therapy might do you the power of good. It may relieve those stresses and soften that furrowed brow. So instead of publishing a list of gifts that you can give to others, I thought I would issue a list of gifts that you could buy for yourself. That's right, this is the most selfish gift guide on YouTube. In this guide, we're looking after number one. Why? Well, because you fully deserve it. Now, I don't want to be too outlandish with this particular gift guide, so I'm going to keep my gifts somewhere under £100 per item. All of the items I'm going to cover should be of use in and around your listening room, in and around your hi-fi. Now, most of the gift guide items I've got here will apply directly to vinyl and vinyl use. But that's only because this particular physical format attracts accessories, well, like bee to honey. However, I will be roaming in other directions as well, so there should be something for everyone in this particular list. Now I have 10 items here for your delectation. They're in no particular order, but I have used them all and I recommend every single one. Now, once the top 10 have been riffled and sorted, I may have a few little bonus items just to add on to the very end as a bit of a extra for you. These are items I haven't used myself, but these are items also that have caught my eye and I just thought they might be of interest to some of you out there. For the bonus items, you can see all those at the end of this video. Oh, and to remind you, if you want to fast navigate around this video, check the description down below there, and there will be a range of chapter headings, and you can go straight to the item you want to have a look at. So let's get on with the show, and I'd like you to welcome contestant number one. There's no swimwear section in this particular video, not after the protests anyway. Item number one, we're looking at record inner sleeves. Now, inner sleeves can come in a wide variety of forms, a wide variety of quantities, and a whole heap of different price points. But I'm just going to quote the amount I normally get and the price I normally pay for them. And that's £40 for 200 inner sleeves. The inner record sleeve is an oft ignored and much misunderstood item that is absolutely essential to your record's future life. Too many old and even new releases are packaged in paper sleeves. Now, paper sleeves, which is a, an insidious little item, is only really included because it's dirt cheap and you can't see it because it's in the actual record sleeve. Now, most labels, if they have a packaging budget at all, well, they tend to pour that into the outer sleeve which makes sense after all, because the outer sleeve is the bit that's supposed to draw you in. That's the thing that's supposed to market the actual LP. That's the item that makes the sale. As far as most record labels are concerned, the inner sleeve can go hang. Nevertheless, if you do buy a new or second-hand LP and you carefully take the record out of that outer sleeve and you find that you've got yourself a paper only inner, I would very carefully remove the record from that inner and then I would carefully again scrunch up that inner sleeve, that paper sleeve, and again once more, let's stay careful here folks, aim it at the nearest bin. A paper sleeve 
is useless. Uh, it's not only useless, it's actually harmful. It's useless because part of the job of an inner sleeve is to keep out dust and other flying debris, and a paper sleeve is especially bad at doing that simple job. Also, every time you take out and reinsert a vinyl record into a paper sleeve, well, you're damaging the record. Now, it's in a subtle and very low-key way, but the actual paper sleeve serves as a very fine piece of sandpaper, and it will, over time, gradually put wear onto the actual surface of your record. A better option is one of these, which combines the paper outer, but also a soft poly liner. Let me bring it to camera and you can see the poly liner bit in a bit more detail. Now this soft plastic inner does a far better job of preventing dust access to the record, but it's also kinder to the record. Yes, you can buy inners made purely of soft plastic, but I find that they can lack structure and cohesion, which means that they tend to buckle and bunch up inside the outer sleeve, often exposing the record to dust just as it sits there in that outer sleeve. Now, yes, you can buy more structurally coherent inner plastic-only sleeves from the likes of Mobile Fidelity. Only problem is, and they are excellent inner sleeves, I must add, but they are relatively expensive. As I say, I, I would normally spend around £40 for 200 poly-lined inners. Mobile Fidelity, you're looking at £40 for only 50 inners. The cheaper option, the poly-lined inner I've just shown you, I'm very happy with them, never regretted ever sticking with them, and I heartily recommend them to you. Next up, and you can see this coming, can't you? We're going to look at outer sleeves. Now, again, I will talk about the outer sleeves that I use and the prices that I pay, but you can once more, you can vary the actual quantity of the outer sleeves you buy and the prices that are charged. You can buy outer sleeves and inner sleeves at a whole host of retail outlets on the internet and via physical high street record stores. Now, outer sleeves are your first defense to keep out dust and grime from inside the sleeve getting to your vinyl. The outer sleeve also protects the record sleeve from damage. So every time you pull out and then put your records back into your collection, there's a threat of scuffing with the adjacent record sleeves. The friction can cause damage to the cardboard and or the artwork. So to protect that rather fragile artwork and the varnish especially that you normally see on a brand new LP sleeve, an outer sleeve does a tremendously important job. Now, at first glance, the rather thick and stiff and sturdy PVC sleeves, they would appear to be the best choice. But, well, I tend to avoid them. PVC outer sleeves, well, over time, if you put them under a certain amount of pressure, and depending on the storage conditions in your listening room, they can adhere to the actual outer sleeve of your record. So for example, on a couple of occasions, I've bought second-hand records where I've removed the record sleeve from a PVC outer. That's got stuck, and before I knew it, the artwork was ripped away from the actual record sleeve, and it was stuck inside the PVC sleeve. It was still there. It actually stuck to the PVC coating. Now, more than that, I find that over time, as they age, PVC sleeves tend to become hard and brittle. Bits of them fall off. I find the corners, especially of PVC sleeves, are susceptible to cracking, which again, lets in the dust. And half the reason the PVC sleeve is there is to keep out the dust. So I tend to rely not on PVC sleeves, but softer 
polyvinyl sleeves. Now I have a PVC sleeve here, it's uh, rather aged or aging. And here's one of my softer polyvinyl sleeves. This one isn't new, this one has been well used, but it retains that soft, very flexible structure. These things are light, they never stick to the record sleeve, at least mine have never done that. They're easy to slide on and off the record sleeve. PV sleeves can be sometimes a little tight fitting in some cases. Even better, the polythene outers are rather cheaper than PVC options. Now, if you've got a decent retailer who sells the polythene outer sleeves, then you may get an option to buy the lighter or heavier gauge options. Personally, I would go with the latter. I would always go with the heavier gauge. The heavier gauge are structurally more sound. The heavier gauge sleeves don't buckle as much. They don't slip around the shelf as much either. Sometimes light gauge polythene sleeves like to float off the record sleeve on their own volition. Heavier gauge examples tend to stay put. Number three, well, we're looking at Sound Deck. You may remember Sound Deck from the PM Platter math review I did in this channel. And there's a link up yonder if you want to have a look at that. Now, in that review, I did mention that there may be a trilogy of items I'll be looking at from Sound Deck. Well, the Platter math was number one of that trilogy. This is number two, because we're looking at some isolation feet from Sound Deck. Called the DF Damping Isolation Feet, Price is £52 for a set of four. Incidentally, I'll be putting contact details of all of these products down in the description. So check out the description if you'd like to buy any of these items. I have no affiliation with any of the people I'm talking about in this guide. Just that I like them, I use them, and I just want to pass on the recommendation. Designed to sit under hi-fi components to reduce vibration and thus lower high frequency noise, which improves clarity and enhances detail, these little feet are compact and tough. And this is an example of what I'm talking about. This is obviously a circular example. There are square options available too, if that's more your thing. Let me bring this to camera. You can have a little looky. These feet consist of two actual plates of steel in either a 75 millimeter square shape or 80 millimeter circular disc. They are bonded together with a viscoelastic polymer. As the metal plates are agitated with vibration, they flex. This movement stretches and contracts the microns in the polymer, which generates heat. This energy transfer is where the noise goes. Anything can sit on top of these feet because they're quite tough. So that means amplifiers and turntables, CD players, even speakers. So I use them myself? Yes, I actually do. At the moment I have a set sitting underneath my turntable. And we have one more item from Sound Deck before we leave that company. It's a little simple gauge tool. It's a VTA and azimuth tool. Priced at £10. And this is it. It's just, well, basically it's a piece of acrylic and not much more. But there's stuff printed on the surface. Again, I'll bring this to camera. You can have a little looky. One of the simplest tools I use in hi-fi, but also one of the most useful. This is basically a slab of acrylic covered with lines and a grid. I use it when installing or tweaking a turntable's tone arm to measure that tone arm's a vertical tracking angle, or indeed the azimuth. You can see the tool in action here. One of its great strengths is that it's thick enough to stand up on its own, so you're free to use your hands for adjusting the tone arm. 
instead of having to occupy the gauge and keeping it vertical. The acrylic is strong and clear, the guidelines and grid are printed clearly and offer good contrast. Now I've seen other similar tools on Amazon and they're fine, you obviously don't have to buy this particular one, there's a choice of similar tools out there. I chose this one and I use this one because it's small enough not to get in the way, it's thick enough to stand up on its own, it's not going to fall over suddenly when I'm in the middle of measuring. The actual grid and the horizontal lines which I use for the measuring, they offer a good contrast and they're immediately visible and never squinting or having to get up close just to see the gauge itself. So yeah, it's simple, it does the job, excellent. In my opinion, every turntable owner should have one. Next up, we're looking at the Vinyl Passion Dustbuster. And again, I have my example here. I was given this one to review for Hi-Fi World magazine, a print magazine, a national magazine in the UK, just in case you don't know, many years ago. Uh, this was at a Hi-Fi show in Whittlebury, when Whittlebury was actually doing Hi-Fi shows. They don't now. It's moved on elsewhere. But I did a review of this and I loved it to bits. Excellent stuff. Because of that, this is an early model. I'm still using it. It's still fine. It's still in operation. There's nothing wrong with it at all. So in terms of its long lasting use, well, it's still fine. It still does the job. This particular one is in a little metal container. I think they're in a the plastic container nowadays. Now, when cleaning a turntable's stylus tip, there are a host of cleaning options. The most popular is either to use a stubby brush to remove stylus debris by friction or to use a brush to apply alcohol directly to the stylus tip to remove grime. I'm not really a fan of either. I don't like the stubby brush method because for me there's a lot of stress being applied to the stylus tip by the brush itself, which may weaken the bond that keeps the stylus tip stuck to the end of the cantilever. Secondly, soaking a stylus tip in alcohol may also weaken those same bonds. Now I did a full investigation of stylus cleaning for my Patreon page and there's an exclusive guide on there and I'll put a link below. And in that particular guide, I also interviewed Autophon and I interviewed Goldring. And there were some interesting conclusions that came out of that guide, but, but check out the link below and you can read it for yourself. Instead, I prefer to clean my stylus by dipping it into, well, basically a sticky pad. One of the best value accessories in this genre is Vinyl Passion's Dust Buster. The idea of this gizmo is to place the exposed pad on a stationary table platter and then gently and carefully, while holding onto the tone arm's finger lift, dip the stylus onto and hopefully into the pad. Well, just a tiny bit. That is, the stylus itself sinks a little into the pad itself. When the stylus is lifted from the pad, the muck that was previously on the stylus should be dragged off the stylus tip by that pad. And it should now remain on the pad and off the stylus. Repeat that two or three times in different parts of the pad. Don't just do it once. This prevents recontamination and then you're sorted. You can see on my dust buster, which is, as I say, rather aging now, there's been a little bit of sinkage on the actual top, but that doesn't affect the use at all. And also I've left a little bit of grime on the pad itself. You might be able to make out a couple of tiny dots. That's where the stylus has deposited its grimy bit into the pad, cleaning the actual stylus tip in the process. So there's no liquid involved here. There's no stress applied to the stylus tip. It's gentle, 
it's also effective. Price, well, that can vary a little bit on the internet, but the figure I saw was £21. Next, I'm going to be looking at a manual vinyl cleaner called the Disco Antistat, which I found available on places like Amazon for £50. Now I have produced a full review of this product on this channel, and I'll put a link up above. So if you want an in-depth look, check out that review. Basically, this is a manual vinyl cleaner, as I've said. In operation, you take your record and clamp it between two pieces of circular plastic that effectively covers and protects the record label during cleaning. You then lower, vertically, your dirty record into a supplied bath full of cleaning liquid, which you also add. The lower part of the record is submerged into the water. The upper part of the record is supported by an axle that runs right through the centre of the labelled clamp and the record's spindle hole, and that's supported on top of the Disco Antistats bath. At this point, you rotate the record in the bath, which is scrubbed by two goat hair brushes fixed inside the bath itself. After cleaning, the record is lifted from the bath, the clamps are removed, and the record is placed on a supplied rack for drying. The Disco Antistat is the best currently available manual vinyl cleaner on the market. Simple as that. Don't choose the supplied cleaning liquid though, it's the only poor part of this entire product. Read my review for guidance on that area. Next up we're looking at the Milti Zero Stat 3, priced around £60 from places like Amazon. It is in the flesh. Well, nearly the flesh. This is the box it comes in. Now, static is an issue if you're into vinyl. Static tends to build up on the vinyl surface. Now, vinyl can build a static charge in a number of ways. By agitating it in some way, moving it in and out of paper sleeves, for example, or cleaning it, that can also increase the static charge but vinyl itself is not conductive in electrical terms, so the charge tends to build up over time. And if you're moving your vinyl record here and there, the charge itself apparently deforms, causing changes in voltage around the vinyl surface. So when the charge, as small as that charge may be, finds a way to escape, such as touching a stylus tip, you hear your pop and crackle noise through your speakers. The Zero Stat 3 was created to stop that discharge happening. The Zero Stat 3 is a gun-shaped device set in a molded hard plastic that produces a combination of positive and then negative ions at the target area, or in other words, your vinyl. The idea is to neutralize the area of static charge. So here is the gun itself in person. In action, you point the gun at your vinyl. Well, you point it at the spindle hole to give the ions an even spread. Hold the gun about 12 inches from the center of the record and gently squeeze the trigger. Then when you can't go any further, maintain the gun's position and slowly release the trigger. The zero stat reduces the static on your vinyl disc. Now I have to say that many people who use a zero stat, and quite a few people who've reviewed this as well, believe that the zero stat removes all static from the surface of a record, and that's not the case. What the zero stat does is reduce the static to manageable levels. So it never becomes an issue in terms of pops and clicks, and you don't get that horrible noise 
through your speakers, but it doesn't actually remove the static. You'd need to spend a lot more money on different tools to achieve that. But as I say, the Zero Stat still does the job. It does the job of removing enough static to get those levels down to such a level that you don't get those discharges and those pops and those crackly noises. Now, static also attracts dust particles, which is why vinyl records can be covered with the stuff because of static. Using the Zero Stat on your record surface will thus lower the amount of dust that is attracted to the vinyl surface. Thus, the Zero Stat is an incredibly useful tool for all vinyl fans. Number eight in our gift guide, and we're going to Ikea. talking about the IKEA Kallax, one of the most ubiquitous storage solutions on the face of the planet, and the saviour for all vinyl collectors the world over, and in a variety of colours too. Made from a relatively low-cost particle board fibre board, and covered in an acrylic, it's easy to clean. Kallax is initially presented as a flat pack package that you will need to construct. All of the parts and most of the tools are made available ready for use in the box. You'll only need to add a screwdriver, but I also find a hammer is useful too. Kallax is offered to you as one or more open cubes with no front or rear protection, although you can retrofit drawers and doors to those squares for an extra fee. Used in its basic configuration, the Kallax product can be bought in various sizes and shapes, featuring a single square space or a larger 25 square structure. Each individual square space is perfect to store vinyl because there remains a useful gap at the top to allow easy vinyl extraction. Now I use Kallax myself. In fact, Kallax appears in every single video I ever do because it's this stuff. It's holding all the vinyl you can see here. It's pretty strong and secure, but if you're on a budget, to my mind, it's the best storage option available. Prices do vary depending on the size of the actual shelving, but you can pay anywhere from £15 for a single cube, and then prices go up from there. Again, I'll put a link below in the description. You can see the whole range of prices for yourself. Next up is, well, such a simple thing, really, but incredibly useful and rather important, and that is a bubble level. I have mine here, and I will bring this to camera in a second. Now, a bubble level is extraordinarily important for hi-fi components that have movable or sensitive parts, or where connections may come under some stress if they're situated at an angle. So, a bubble level is very important to make sure all of your components are dead level. Now, bubble levels as tools can be found all over the place in high street hardware shops, in out-of-town hardware centres, hi-fi shops, all over the place. The internet is absolutely covered with them. They're everywhere. Now, this one I use is from the hi-fi manufacturer Avid, and it's an excellent bubble level. It's rather expensive, though, but even so, let me bring it to camera. In broad terms, I would recommend a low-profile circular design to give you an instant 360-degree measurement so you can instantly see any possible tilt of your component in any direction. I would also recommend a clear and open reading on the surface, 
one that's not masked by a host of markings that might obscure your view. Finally, check to see how sensitive the bubble measurement is. I have seen some bubble levels that are a little sluggish when moved, so be aware of that. This one is a rather expensive model at £60, which does work beautifully, but there's a host of much cheaper examples out there. Just take your time when choosing one and choose the right one for you. Don't just grab the first cheapo example you see. Finally, for this gift guide, we're going to look at a low cost platter mat. Looking at the Cork It Platter Mat, priced at £18.50. One of the quickest and simplest upgrades you can possibly make to your turntable, that's the Cork Platter Mat. Just remove the old mat currently on the platter and place the new mat on the centre spindle, and the job is done. The Cork Mat, especially, is ideal if you have a default rubber mat, which I don't rate at all. And while felt mats are very nice for the price, and they work well, the cork mat will enhance the sound further still, lowering the noise, enhancing fine details, and calming the soundstage as a whole. Now, yes, there are far superior platter mats on the market, but you will pay an awful lot more for them. So I just wanted to show you how little you could spend to improve the performance of your turntable. And on that score, it works as an ideal gift. And that's my top 10 Christmas gift items. And I did promise you before I go, I'd have a quick look at, well, how many? Three bonus items. As I say, I haven't seen them, haven't touched them, don't know too much about them, but they look intriguing. They look as though they have potential. So let me present those to you. If you'd like to see a review of any of them, I'll bring them in and give them the once over. Oh, and only one of them breaks the £100 barrier. The other two stay under that figure. First up, we have the glorious vinyl frame displays, priced at £30. The price buys three of the frames in which you can display your favourite LP covers available with a wide black or white frame and finished with a glass cover. It's a simple way to display your favorite sleeve art. The next item is also from Glorious and it has a sort of retro thing going on. This is the Glorious turntable low board and it provides a base on which to display your turntable. It stores up to 130 records. It also houses your amplifier and includes shock absorbing rubber feet. It's made of wood and it sort of channels a retro 60s vibe. Now, it's not my choice for an absolute audiophile sound support, but as I say, if you're looking for that retro look, and especially if you're running a vintage hi fi chain, this one may be worth a look. And finally, I'm going to look at Reloop and a vinyl storage box. This one is called the Reloop 60 record case and it's priced at £45. Now, record cases don't just have to be the domain of DJs. Audiophiles can use them to move records from one room of the house to another to use as a temporary storage solution for a second system or even to separate particular records for one reason or another. Also, you may not be able to have storage shelves against your wall. Maybe the walls angle in a little bit or they might be covered with other types of furniture and there may not be the space. So a storage box might be an ideal solution just to store your record collection. The Reloop 60 record case provides space for 60 albums, features foam padding, and is built from aluminium coated wood. And that's it folks, I hope you found something of interest in that lot. Now, as this is a Christmas themed video, I thought now would be the time to 
add a few little channel notes as we approach the end of the year. Next week will be my final video of this year. But because Christmas falls as it does, is it Saturday? I can't remember. Anyway, it's a little bit sort of early. It's encroaching onto the week, isn't it? Because of that, I'll be posting my final video next week on a Thursday. So check out that on a Thursday. If there's any changes, if I have to change my mind for some reason, I will put an alert in the community tab down there somewhere. And you may want to look at the community tab just anyway, because I tend to put other bits of information, forthcoming video information, for example, in that community tab. It's a, a good place just to check out now and then. So as I say, final video of the year on this channel will be next Thursday. Now I'll be taking a break over the Christmas holidays. I'll be back next year around, well, the early January. First video will be 8th, 9th of January. So look out for that one. If you can, that will be a, a weekend video, more than likely. And by then I should be sober, possibly. But look, if I don't see or speak to you before then, I want you to have a lovely Christmas. Hang on a minute. Let's keep it festive. Hey, I hope Father Christmas brings you a lot of presents, and I'm sure he will, because I know you've been good. More than that, I hope you have a very peaceful new year. Take care of yourself and also the ones you love, and I'll be back next Thursday, and after that, around the 8th, 9th of January. I hope to see you then, because I love to have your company. Until that time, folks. Until that time. Bye-bye for now. <laughs>